when we started uh, putting the organization together, we were trying to save money as much as possible. And Jack White, who was then president of NET, Channel 13, offered to give us space and take care of the, uh, well, I'll call the back office stuff, that is the payroll, the uh, legal work that needed to be done. So we presumably did not need to hire the infrastructure that we might have otherwise had to hire initially. However, shortly after that, when we began to see the dimensions of what we were trying to do, we realized that we really had to have people who were uh, dedicated to what we were doing, because NET was not producing any children's programming. And the kinds of things we were doing were different to some extent than the things that they were doing. It was not an efficient arrangement as far as they were concerned, although they were very hospitable. Jack White was terrific in giving us this, this space and this help. No doubt about it. And, uh, but we decided we really had to be independent, have an independent organization. Therefore, once you decide that, you have to create an organization. And we created uh, the Children's Television Workshop as the name of the organization with an initial board of five. Who was on the board? Joan, myself, uh, let's see, who, would el who else would have been? I believe Jack White was on the board at that time. Jerry Lesser was probably on the board at that time. And what kind of authority did it have? I've already described how we wanted to keep the board uh, out of the content activity, so it had the thor it had the, author the fiscal authority it had. It had the authority to hire the management. It it acted like a policy board in in many organizations, and indeed, that's essentially what our board today is. That is, it's a much larger board, but it's a policy board. It has fiscal responsibility. It has an audit committee. We didn't have an audit committee at that point. Auditing was not quite the key thing then that it is now, but uh, it has general oversight, I would say, is the answer. How has the board grown? We also found that we were going to need our sp more space, particularly as we expanded. and. I guess it was the third year we began to produce the electric company, probably. So we had more things to do, and we needed to, Channel 13 couldn't provide it. And uh, we, we went, we were in the Bible building up here on, or down there on, hmm. well, it's close by here, not too far away. For a while, uh, we, we also, as I've said, knew we had to do two things. We could not count on government and foundation funding. Therefore, we needed a board that could um, help us develop independent means of support. And therefore, we wanted to diversify the board in terms of their business background. We wanted also to diversify the board in terms of a cultural background because from the very beginning, uh, appealing to Spanish children, Spanish Hispanic children was important. We needed Hispanic representation on the board. We need black representation on the board. So we were diversifying ethnically, uh, linguistically, and in terms of business background. And the board has, now we have, because uh, we have so much more international activity. We have more people who are, who are internationally oriented. We have now more people on the board who uh, have expertise in the media than we did initially. It's become a much more competitive media landscape than what I've described in 1969. 1969, there was no competition for what Sesame Street was doing. In 19, in 2004, uh, you have all the t programs on public broadcasting, uh, you have programs on independent channels that are aimed at children, uh, you have home video that's available for children, you have uh, PlayStation that is available for children. So the competition in terms of getting the child's attention to what we're trying to do is much different than it was then. And 
we have a different a different set of expertise on the board now than we did then. And what about the funding issues themselves? How have those changed? Like much of television, the cost of television production for us has gone up like everything else. And as I said, we're producing many fewer shows per year than we did then. We're interspersing old shows in it so that there is not a repetition of a season, but the repetition of some shows from previous seasons in a new season sprinkled in with new programs. <coughs> that helped greatly in cutting down the cost. Uh, part of the income for, for producing Sesame Street comes from a licensing fee from public broadcasting. And public broadcasting, as you undoubtedly know, has been underfunded since the beginning and is under extreme uh, financial uh, stringency. So they have had to cut down the amount of license fee that they're willing to pay, which in turn ref is reflected back in terms of the number of new shows per year that we are producing. Still, the cost of Sesame Street, if I've got this right, I'm, it's around $20 million a year. Uh, the two-thirds to three-quarters of that comes from earned revenue, from licensing toys, games, records, clothing, other things associated with Sesame Street. As you know, the Sesame Workshop, that's our new name, not Children's Television Workshop anymore, is a nonprofit organization, so essentially all the earned revenue goes back into the program. Why did you change the name? We uh, are interested in expanding the reach of what we do beyond preschool children, and then the question becomes what name will people recognize and trust? We, we tested a variety of names and found that Children's Television Workshop was practically not known by anybody. Sesame Street was known by everybody. So Sesame, the word Sesame, was a key word to have in whatever name we were going to do, and we still like, we still consider it a workshop, still an experiment. So that's the name. 